Hey everybody, Bear Tracker Nature Films here, and this is an interesting thing I found out in the forest here. What I first noticed was this particular scat right here, and uh, if you look at the size of that, consistent with bobcat, and it's also very firm. I can't squash it with a stick, in fact I just broke that stick trying to squash that scat, which is another characteristic of bobcat scats, they're really firm. The other thing I noticed was that there are other pieces of scat peeking out from behind those leaves. So, this was buried. Um, you might think that's not unusual, because this is a cat after all, but bobcats don't always bury their scats like your domestic cats do. You can see here where some soil was scraped. This has been rained on as of Monday. Today is Thursday. Um, so obviously the, the disturbance is old. This is not a new scat. Um, but what I then did was pick up some of the debris and scooch the leaves back and find a completely buried scat under there. And again, consistent with bobcat. So there you go. It's got the segmented appearance of a bobcat scat. So see how there's uh, segments right here, this little line. That's one blunt segment, here's another segment, there's a segment right there, and then this one itself, the first one I noticed, is also segmented, which is another characteristic of your feline scats, oftentimes blunt on the ends like this. There may be a pointed end, or not, that just depends on which part came out last, usually. Um, and if you poke it with a stick and put some pressure on it, usually you can't break these apart very easily. They're very firm, so it passed the firmness test. It was buried, and size range is less than an inch um, wide, and fairly good quantity, but not a huge quantity like you would expect with a mountain lion. So this is a bobcat scat, and the unusual thing about it is that it was buried. Um, I don't usually find them out here buried, and of course they're kind of hard to find anyway because you know, if they bury them, you're not going to see much. I just happened to see that little chunk sitting out outside, not buried. But um, also, this disturbance right here would have been more obvious uh, before the rain. But look around, and you see a lot of leaves. And the forest floor looks fairly uniform, except for right there where the scat was buried. So where the scat was buried... You can see that the leaves have been removed and and uh, scraped together into that central pile. Whereas out here, where nothing else was done, no, no scraping happened, um, the leaves are just kind of randomly distributed. So that's another clue that there was something there, is the fact that this whole area showed some scraping and movement of the, the normal forest stuff. So just a, a thing that you can find. This is actually not a an official human trail. That's an old dirt road right there that hasn't been used for a long time. Um, my pack is laying on um, a deer trail and I'm standing on a deer trail and the deer trail kind of goes like this and over the log. So it's a forested location but it is sort of a trail intersection and uh, bobcats are known for marking places like that. But you can look around, it's a fairly dense tan oak forest and uh, there's not much in here as far as uh, food items because there's not a lot of understory cover. But there are wood rats around. I found wood rat nests nearby and uh, other animals pass through here. So it looks like the bobcat was just kind of passing through and uh, happened to bury a scat right here where this trail, this deer trail, comes out onto this, this old uh, road that was used for logging many years ago and has since overgrown. It's probably been 40 years since this road was actually used. Um, but anyway, I thought you'd enjoy that. Uh, this is just a look at a bobcat scat and how you can tell it's a bobcat versus something else that's found out here like a, a gray fox or a mountain lion or a coyote. I'm a little further down the trail and I found something else of interest. Another scat, but I wanted to contrast this one with that bobcat scat I just showed you. So if you look around take kind of the big picture in here. There's the trail, a rough uh, deer trail right here, and 
So if you look at the placement of this scat, it's on top of a little projection of dirt. This stands probably a couple inches tall. So it stands out, if you're a little animal that's about this tall and you're walking along, you're going to see that because it's very prominent on the landscape to you being that size. So what else you notice about this scat is inside of it there's some grass. So see right here, this is grass that the animal ate and that came out. So that's all part of the scat. The scat also appears to have manzanita berries in it, which are those little brownish things there, and possibly some fur and prey remains. So it's a carnivore or an omnivore because it ate grass. And the placement here is pretty typical of canines. And in this area, the canine with scat about this size is the gray fox. So from the two different scats, both from carnivorous animals, um, and in one case an omnivore, you can tell a lot about their behavior. So the fox is a little bit more kind of bold and open in its nature as far as it, it uh, trots along in the open looking for prey, and it deposits its scats in prominent locations where other members of its species can find them. Whereas the bobcat is more of a stealth hunter, and it relies on being quiet and not just trotting around out in the open all the time trying to find prey, but uh, rather hiding and waiting um, and just carefully searching for prey. So the bobcat hid its scat and buried it, whereas the fox posted it on a very noticeable location on the landscape. So that also tells you something about the nature of these animals and the differences between the canines and felines out here, the wild ones anyway. Um, it wouldn't really be that difficult for either one of them to hunt in here, but uh, as far as advertising their presence, the bobcat really doesn't want the prey animals to figure out that it's here. And your fox kind of relies on surprising most of the prey animals. It, it runs around, it trots a lot, it, it does a lot of digging for food, so the fox will come out here and dig for, for insects and things because it has a more um, wide and very diet than the, the bobcat does. Bobcats need meat and foxes they can eat berries, they can eat nuts off these hazelnut trees, um, they could eat the uh, the rose hips and they can eat all kinds of insects that are found out here. So there's plenty of food out here for the gray fox as opposed to the bobcat. So that's just a little bit about the differences in the nature of the two animals and their diet and their scats and the deposition and the position of where they put those scats and and their behavior when they deposit the scat also tells you a lot about the nature of that animal. So that's a little bit of tracking and a glimpse into the, the scats of a couple of animals and I hope you've enjoyed it.